So would you begin by introducing yourself and your connection to WSCF? Okay, I'm Thomas Reeser. I am a senior friend, a very senior friend of the Federation. I started my involvement in the Federation in 1945 and uh, have been more or less connected with it all this time. I've been asked to comment, make some comments, and I've chosen to make the comments on the theme of the assembly. We are many, we are one building sent out to build the God, God's peace <clears throat> I take this in the reverse order. First, I want to talk about the peace and then about the first part that we are many and that we are one. I would like to develop some thoughts on, on this assembly theme, which is we are many and we are one. We are sent out to build God's peace. First, a little correction. The peace of God is not something we can build, but it is a given. And that's why Jesus says in John 14, the peace I give you, my peace I give you. But he also says, not like the world. So there are two kinds of peace, the world's peace and his peace. A few words first on the world's peace. The world makes peace originally in history by sacrificing. Somebody in a crisis is, is true, found that is guilty and is sacrificed and thereby the community finds peace. He is actually a scapegoat, as we say today. We still have traces of that today. But uh, in, hist in uh, historic times, peace was made then by way of treaties. Uh, first, how does the world make peace? If we go into the history, into prehistoric times, we find that communities, tribes, and so on, made peace by sacrificing somebody, finding somebody whom they thought he is or she is the guilty one, and then killing that person, and that provided peace. We have still traces of that today, although they are no longer very effective. When we talk about scapegoats, we are talking about those ancient sacrifices, but we also indicate by using the word scapegoat that we don't believe in the eff efficacy of this peacemaking. When we get from the prehistoric times to the historic times, this is the transition into the Christian era. And peace is now achieved by treaties. And we have had this kind of peace under the influence of the Jewish Christian tradition first in Europe, and then in North America, and then in the rest of the world. It's now worldwide that we have to have agreements and we negotiate for peace. We also know now that peace has to be worldwide. Every, oh, <coughs> every outbreak of violence in one place has worldwide percussions. 
So peace is almost hard to attain. And uh, this is illustrated, for instance, by the existence of the UN. Hardly anybody really believes in the, in the efficacy of the UN, but it is still here. So we are in the position of knowing we need peace and also that we cannot attain it. <clears throat> why, why is it that peace is not effective? by negotiation, because it is always <coughs> based on a conflict and violence, a conflict and violence. In other words, the peace which the world offers is always, involves always some kind of violence. Why is the peace of Christ different? Because it does not assume a common enemy, but reconciliation with the enemy. Jesus demonstrated this peace in his life and especially in his death. He allowed his enemies to crucify him, and he even prayed for them while he was dying. And ever since then, that means for the last 2,000 years, this possibility exists in the world. <clears throat> and that's why it, but it did not exist before. And that's why in the gospel we talk about use. It's a new thing. <clears throat> what has this possibility, this new peace, done to the world today, in the last 2,000 years? Has it had an effect? We do see effects. We have, for instance, the whole development of human rights including women's rights. And we have a new concern for the victim. Victims are innocent. That's a new thing in relation to prehistoric times. Victims were automatically considered guilty. So we have a concern for victims and we have a huge humanitarian effort worldwide. This is an impact of the Christian tradition. These are signs of the peace of Christ. The only signs. We do not yet have the actual peace. But it is our task also, and here I come now to what we have to do. We have to build signs that we can do. We cannot build a peace, but we can build signs and we can point to the signs that are emerging. Now, specifically to the second part of the theme, we are many, we are one. The main issue of peace is simply how can we, in spite of being many, become one? Because the many are usually also enemies among, against each other. This is true for people, it is true for countries and it is true for regions and since the WSCF is structured in regions it might be useful to think and reflect about the relationship between regions. In the world today the regions are always more or less in competition 
in rivalry with each other. A lot of the dynamics of the, say, the economic dynamics is based on catching up. The Chinese want to catch up with the U.S. <coughs> and the Russians want to catch up. So this sets up a system of rivalry which is always undermining peace. If we talk about peace among regions, then we are talking about the possibility that regions, instead of being rivals, contribute, help each other. And I think this would be one of the issues that could be raised by asking <clears throat> how could within the WSCF a process be started by which regions would be helping each other and by how they would think of contributing something to the world level that makes for peace. In other words, to reverse the dynamics along the lines of what John Kennedy said some 40 or 50 years ago when he was inaugurated, when he said, he asked the people, do not ask what can the country do for me, but what can I do for the country? So we could apply that, that the regions would ask, do not ask what can the world do for me or the world level, but what can I do for the world level? And that would set up another dynamic. I hope that this will provide some input in the assembly, and I really wish that this assembly could make a contribution to the world peace by developing new problems, new processes for conversation, for dialogue, and for forgiveness. I know that I may sound nostalgic, but that's part of what the senior friends are. But in the, <clears throat> the WSCF has provided a model in the 1930s and the 1940s for the World Council of Churches. And it became, may, became again, may become again a model for peace building in the 20th cent 21st century. That's my hope. Do you have any, any, any more specific thoughts about what is needed from the WSCF, you know, to provide, um, to provide uh, the way for WCC and others? Uh, what, what it, the contribution would be to really make visible on the world level and not just in the region what it means to be one that where i think we are lacking even in the world council today is there anything do you want to say any other hopes that you have for the wscf or just any final comments well the <clears throat> what i I, I would hope my vision for the WSCF is that it would really become not just various movements, but a movement which goes beyond the structures. The churches are tied down in structures, and they are therefore not very effective for peace building. Only movements can today build peace. This, they are not tied down by structures, but they are more spontaneous. They also are, of course, more 
vulnerable. But that's the risk we have to take, and I hope the WSCF might take that kind of risk. Any more about what it means to be a movement or what you can do as a movement? What you can do is, if you look at the movements, you, you know, let's say the Occupy Wall Street movement, things like that, they are spontaneous, they go beyond the structures, they do not last, but they always stimulate. They are not bound by the question of efficiency, but by the question of authenticity. And that is where we are really lacking for uh, examples and models. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see how we can out get out of here.